It's so nice to see young people taking an interest in their community to the point that they're prepared to raise an issue. In this case, we have four young people who have started a campaign to save the tailed frog. And they are certainly being heard, not only in their own community, but across the country. Now, what you're looking at, a guide to the beach creatures of White Cliff Park, is a brochure that the children actually put together. This is uh, not related to the tailed frogs. I'm just going to flip it over and show you. The children wrote this entire brochure all about how you can protect all these, what are they? Beach, beach creatures. Beach creatures. Can you say beach creatures quickly, ten times? No, you don't have to. No. I'm just joking. <laughs> and we have with us, uh, actually all four of the children are joining us on set, but we're going to do a, a switch halfway through. David Mazaros. Yeah. Now, you're probably the loudest one that we've been hearing. And Kathleen, it's Folly? Yeah. Folly. Okay. Now the two of you have been speaking up quite a bit. You've been making presentations to your city council. You've been in the newspaper. You've been on the radio. Like this, today's show is like, oh, no big deal. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, what are you trying to accomplish? We're trying to accomplish um, the starting out. We just wanted to find a threatened species that's never been st found in West Vancouver before. Okay. Then when we found out it's on Whoopi Estates, we wanted to Whoopi let... Whoopi Estates? Yeah. Really? BP Whoopi Estates. Okay. We wanted to let people know they're there so that they have some sort of protection. And now we're si trying to keep um, the frog's habitat so that they can survive. Because if the development is built too close to the creek, the ha their habitat will be ruined by the sunlight getting into the creek and heating it up, and silt getting into the creek and making it muddy. That takes away their habitat. Now, how old are you? I'm 10. You're 10? Yes. And Kathleen, how old are you? 11. You're 11. And now, is this your first sort of political campaign? <laughs> Yeah. Yes, kind of, yeah. Uh, Kathleen, you're involved in the same outdoor recreation group, right? Now, ORCA is the Outdoor Recreation Community Association, yes. is that right? So w what kinds of things do you do? Well, uh, not in including this project, we've done many other projects, including the Beach Creatures, which you saw the brochure, and we've done a bird banding product project. What's that? Um, it's, we went down to, um, by the, the, um, where the birds are? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. The wetlands? Yeah, and it, it was very close to an uh, airport, so we were trying to see, like, the different kinds of birds, and we did a whole research study on it. We did, we had to record their weight and their oh, sizes. Oh, interesting. And, yeah. Now, one of you have said that actually you found this more educational in some of your school programs, <laughs> all the yeah. things that you were doing. Yeah. And so, so this is interesting. This is what you do in your free time, though. This is a club that you've joined. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Now, you went to West Vancouver City Council. Were you scared? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that's, that's honest. You were scared. So there you were. You were talking to these people elected. Mm -hmm. How did they respond to what you were saying? Mm. Okay. Um, they responded. They... I mean, were they, they friendly? Um, gave they gave us a bit of attention. They were friendly, yeah. And I think they put a lot of thought towards us and oh, that's the good. frog. Right. But I don't, I don't know if um, how much power they have over this issue. The city council. Um, yeah, and okay. I'm hoping that um, the city council can do something really great to save these um, frogs. Which so are, this really matters to you. Yeah. Okay. Now, w have you had any indication? Like, I mean, have they said to you, okay, well, yes, we're going to try and look after it. We're going we're gonna to look into it. No, they haven't. Not really. Okay. They've it's being studied by a committee, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. They, <laughs> That's they always what they do, send it off to a committee. Yeah. Have you learned a lot about the political process then? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What, what would you say to people who are watching right now, other young people who are saying, you know, uh, maybe I should do something like that? You have to be prepared. You have to be mm -hmm. very prepared. Mm -hmm. Do you? Yeah. Okay. And you've been taking quite a few media calls on this. Okay. Do you plan to continue your work on this from here? Or is it sort of, well, we made our presentation and that's it? We continue to keep going yeah. until the final decision is made, which should be made on January 12th, except okay. we don't know that for sure. Okay. They, they keep, they, we've had about three meetings now. Mm -hmm. And the first one, they said, okay, we'll look into that. The second one, they said they deferred until December 1st. Right. And then on December 1st, they deferred till January 12th. So it's a pretty and, typical yeah. political meeting from the sounds <laughs> of it. Yeah. Okay, we're going to uh, take your calls as well. And I think it's important for us to, uh, we're always looking for examples of kids getting involved in their community. So let's, let's tell them what we think of what they're doing and uh, maybe encourage them. And let's talk to Cindy first in Vancouver. Hi, Cindy. Hi. Hi, go ahead. Um, yeah, I, I think that the government should, should try and help kids get into programs that, that is going to help them 
become a, a, a stable and healthy adult. Right. And, and I find that, I, that they're making cuts in these areas instead of uh, boosting the, the youth. Right. And, and what these kids are doing is great. I think it's great. Okay. I think that that's a very good point. Thank you for raising that. Um, how much I noticed that in your in your brochure about the beach creatures, you have sponsors that include Friends of the Environment Foundation, the BC government, and your association. Mm -hmm. How much support are you getting right now in your efforts to try to protect? You want to answer this, Kathleen? Well, we're getting a lot of support. We've been there's a lot of people who've been backing us up, um, and we think that's just great. We didn't we never knew it was going to grow into such a huge project and a lot of people have are on our side now that's in your public so your phones have been ringing off the hook of people saying hey mm -hmm. you know we really like what you're doing yeah. um, what about the government though I mean has the provincial ministry of environment you actually you you were in touch with the ministry of environment as well right and mm -hmm. somebody there said yes there's a uh, an endangered species uh, act or something is that right mm -hmm. yes. okay why don't you tell us about that um, you know what I'm talking about yeah. There was someone from the Ministry of Environment who said, well, the local yeah. council can pass a regulation. Do you remember what that conversation was about? Mm, no, not really. Not okay. really. Well, let's take another call, and we'll let you think okay. about that. And we'll talk about it during the break, too. Let's talk to Greg now in Abbotsford. Hi, Greg. Good afternoon. Hi, go ahead. Yes, I'd like to tell the children to uh, keep up the good work there, and uh, hopefully they'll get their school, the whole school system involved in it. Right. As people should respect nature more in order, you know, for our children and their children to enjoy more in the future. Right. Well, so I just like to say, carry on, no matter what the outcome of this is. There's right. lots of fights out there too. Okay, well, I Thank think you. that's very good, and and actually, I think that's an important point. Regardless of what happens right now, don't get discouraged because obviously you're having a big impact if people are all over the province. And in fact, your news story went all over the country, didn't it? Mm. Your effort to yeah. save your frogs. Do you ever? Oh, bless you. Excuse do you ever get discouraged though? I mean, did you think that if you made a presentation that they would act right away? I mean, was there some thought that they would say, oh, yeah, well, that's an excellent point. Let's protect the frogs. No. Yeah. I no. thought we, uh, we all thought that there's going to be some, there's, there's always some way to fix things, and there's probably a way to make it that um, the frogs are happy and the developer is happy. Right. Okay, but, so you're prepared yeah. to balance that. Now, your dad's a real estate agent, too. Yeah. Okay, so this is not usually what, where he's yeah. involved. In. <laughs> sort of, he's probably going to get in trouble from some of the developers there. I don't think that they're gonna, he's going to get one of his first listings from there. No, <laughs> <laughs> no okay. Let's, uh, let's talk to Liana in North Vancouver. Hi, Liana. Hello. Hi. Um, I would just like to commend the, the two youth on the excellent job that they are doing and, and their club. Okay. And uh, to continue on with, with their positive work. And um, I believe the government should back them up 100% and um, um, encourage our youth to, to do you, uh, positive work like this right. and, instead of um, putting our youth down all the time and, and showing the, uh, the negative things um, that happen around youth. Um, right. Start encouraging the positive things um, like this and uh, okay. continue on. Um, right. Okay. The majority of the public are very proud of the work that uh, your club is doing. Okay, well, thank you for that. And I guess you've heard that. She's also from North Vancouver. You're from West Vancouver. Uh, now, you've found a lot of people are encouraging you, and I'm sure that there will be more people through the show who do. To what extent are you finding that other young people want to get involved in things like this? Well, well, okay. well there was uh, some uh, child that came to council to watch us, and... Uh, all the way in White Rock, and um, so I think a lot of the children, like like our classmates, are getting into this, or so our teachers and stuff like that. Would you do a presentation again to City Council? If we had to, yeah. Like, would it be easier this time? Yeah. Yeah. Because um, now you have a better idea, mm -hmm. and soon you're going to know the councillors by name, right? You'll have their home yeah. phone numbers. <laughs> you phone them up and go, "Hey, where is that in the system?" Mm. Well, maybe not yet. Okay, let's talk to Rena now in Souk. Hi, Rena. Hi. Um, I just want to say to the kids, you guys are doing such a good job. Um, keep up the good work, there and it's go. and it's great that um, that you, Ms. Tyabji, that you're doing something like this mm -hmm. because kids nowadays are just getting such a bad rap, yeah. and there are good kids out there, and I I want to say keep up the good work. Okay, thank you very much, Rena. And, and that's something that I want to talk about a little bit later after the break. But um, as young people, I mean, you're 10, you're 11 years old, you're still very little. I mean, you may think of yourselves as big, you're still very little. And uh, we've had a lot of news stories lately about kids that portray them in a bad light. A lot of young people have said, 
they don't want to only see the negative stories. And that's why we thought we'd bring something on that's positive. But while we take the break, maybe you can think a little bit about that too, of how you'd like people to view young people and whether or not you're getting, I mean, are you getting as much respect as you would have liked out of the system? So we'll think about that. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're talking, we're talking to four young activists who are getting involved in their community. We'll be right back. Tyab She is brought to you in part by Metro Lexus Toyota, leaders in customer satisfaction. Me, 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 here it goes. Oh, you got it, you got it, I got it. <laughs> Quit dripping on me. <laughs> hey, Mom. Hi, guys. Hey. Worked up a sweat, huh? <laughs> yeah, sort of. Got anything interesting? Right, we got pop, orange, purple stuff. Sunny D. Yeah. yeah. Right. Tastes like orange and tangerine. Mine. And it's got vitamins A, B1, and C. Excellent. Hey, good service. Hey, way to go, Mom. Sunny Delight is here. It's goodness kids go for. It's not just the wind or the cold. One of the harshest environments can be the inside of a diaper, where wetness can upset the delicate pH. Pampers Baby Dry can help. It turns the blue liquid clear as it lowers the pH, and it pulls that wetness away to help keep skin dry and healthy. Wetness can upset the delicate pH in a diaper, and Pampers Baby Dry helps control it. Help protect their skin from wetness with Pampers Baby Dry. Pamper the skin they're in. Here comes Christmas, when wishes come true. I'm feeling romantic and thinking of you. This Christmas, romance is in the air at Sears. Choose something from the Calvin Klein Fragrance Collection. Obsession, Eternity, Escape, or choose CKB or CK1. Fragrances shared by men and women. It's your Christmas wish store. Come see the merry side of sea. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, that's a new addition to the family. Oh, just beautiful. Got ABS oh. brakes. Easier access than ever. Side door impact beam, 40 standard safety features, and it's got a five-star rating and front-end crash test. And right now, Windstar comes with an all-star deal with our new 98 model at only $249 a month, but only at your BC Ford and Mercury dealer and only for a limited time. And how about that gorgeous little baby? He likes it, too. And today we're talking about children and frogs. Our guests are Kathleen Folly, David Mazaros, Tristan Huntington, and Michael Van Innsburg. And Tristan and Michael will be joining us in the second half of the show. Right now, of course, we have David and Kathleen with us. And during the break, we were talking a little bit about whether or not you think that the children are, should take a more active role. And you said that someone gave you that quote, uh, children should be seen and not heard. Mm -hmm. And you had some comments on that. Yeah, um, we should be um, heard as well because... We've just raised some really great um, questions and answers about this frog. And it's not just a frog. It's never really been found in West Vancouver before. And it's really great that to find it in here, let alone kids finding it. Right. Because you guys went out on a science project and suddenly you find all these great frogs and then you learn about it and yeah. you take it from there. Well, that's interesting. Now, uh, also, do you think there's too much violence on TV? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Newspapers and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Does that affect the way you think about the world? Yeah. Yeah. Does it? In a way. Yeah. 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 Like some like <laughs> some people I know they're kind of scared now, like to be going outside and seeing people like I don't know because doing something violent might acts. Yeah. Right. We're going to talk about that a little bit more too, because I know a lot of people, uh, and this is an opportunity for us to actually ask young people how they think we can help solve some of the problems that we talked about last Friday. Last Friday we talked about the murder in Saanich and a lot of the activities of young people and how many young people, they say they don't have, act, they don't have activities to do after school, uh, they get caught up in the violence of the video games and television. So maybe think about that for a sec. We'll take a few more phone calls and then we'll ask you whether or not you guys have enough to do in your spare time. Let's talk to Gord in Vancouver. Hi, Gord. Hi, how are you doing? Fine, thanks. Go ahead. I really like to commend your guests there that uh, they're standing up and doing something about it. The difference between them and a lot of activists that we see on TV is they, they, a lot of the activists use the media to get ahead, and these people are going ahead and doing it. And uh, right. I commend you extremely highly, Judy, to have something worth watching because oh, we nice. really get tired of the politics and that kind of stuff. And these people are getting out and doing it. And don't let 
people put you down just because you're young, because you are going to be the people that are going to run the world when us people are old. Right. So stand up and be proud and uh, enforce the idea that people not talk down to you because you have something very important to say. And again, I commend uh, Judy for having uh, you on, on her program. And uh, watch out, Judy, this just might improve your ratings by having this type <laughs> of stuff on there. Okay, the well, politics we're extremely tired of. Okay, thanks, Gord. Well, it's interesting that uh, that he brings that up about you guys are going to be the future. Everybody says mm -hmm. that the young people are the future. And then when you speak out, nobody really wants to hear from you. So what would you do differently, if you could, to ha make sure that young people have a more active role? I mean, have you ever thought about that, what you could do to help, for example, make sure that there are enough activities? Do you have activities in your spare time? Yeah, we have mm -hmm. lots of activities in our spare time. Do you? What kinds of things? Sports. We do sports. 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 We go and do this, this sort of stuff. We do hiking. We have lots of things we do. We have lots of homework. We have, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, there's the reality of something. But uh, some young people say they have so little to do, and that's why they get into trouble. What do you think about that? Um, I don't think that's quite true. You can get yourself um, into a lot of things if you try. If you just um, hang around and do that and play video games or whatever, you're not going to get anywhere with um, having time to do other things. Like recreational stuff? Yeah, like recreational stuff, like Cubs, say. Like Cubs? Yeah, like oh, Orca. Okay. okay, oh, clubs, yeah, right. Sure, join a club. Yeah. That's an idea. Let's talk to Jason in Mission. Hi, Jason. Are you there? Okay. Let's talk to Danielle in Port Alberni. Hi, Danielle. Hi. Hi, go ahead. Hi, I'm 13, and I was just wondering, did you guys talk to the developer? Did they talk to the developer? That's a very good question, actually. Did they see what his opinion was on it? Yeah, actually, they did. You met with the developer, and that's a thank you for raising that. Uh, the developer actually has been working on this development for some time, and they obviously are, have a lot at stake if you guys succeed. So how did the meeting go? Very well. Did it? Yeah. 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 Now, They're who called for the? Did you call the developer, or did the developer phone you and say, hey, let's sit down and talk about this? Developer. The developer phoned us. We were supposed to go... Um, to a meeting with them before, except we weren't told what time it was and we got and we missed that. So okay. we went over to their boardroom later on and they talked to us and they showed us their plans and it's really, really great. I know I think that they really care about the frogs. Right. But they have a lot um, to worry about as well. Okay, so. now when you say that they really care about the frogs, did you provide them with information they didn't have before? Did yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. You yeah, did. Because yeah. if, if you guys hadn't done that, I guess no one would have known the frogs were there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think I saw something that said that the, usually uh, you'll find I in areas where these tail fro frogs exist, there's like 0.67 per square yeah. meter, and you found eight mm. tadpoles mm -hmm. per square meter. So it's a lot of them. Yeah. So that's nice. So the meeting with the developer went well. Yeah. Okay. And uh, that's the best way to approach things. Okay. Let's talk to Jean now in Vancouver. Hi, Jean. Hello. Hi. I just want to... Uh, put my voice forward to encourage these little children because many years ago when I was in another country, mm -hmm. we had a little pond that was on the outskirts of our little village right. and they were going to build houses there. And of course the children raised their voices and right. to this day that little pond has extended to a park. Wow. <laughs> and it's in memorial to all the young children that did that. So keep the fight up. Well, that's Don't great. back down. Now, did they Be get encouraged. Did they have some resistance at first? The, the oh, yes. Oh, they they were determined to build these houses there. And mm. no, we wanted our pond. Right. Okay. And we got it. Well, that's great. And I just want to tell the children, stick to it. <laughs> stick to it. Don't be uh, odd or anything. Just go ahead. Okay. And I admire, your, I admire your efforts. Really, I do. Great. Well, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Well, that's very nice. I, I guess you've heard that a lot. I mean, have you had people phoning you at home and telling you to yeah. keep going? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, now, David Suzuki also threw his name in the in the ring. He, he sent you a letter after you received some publicity. What was that about? Um, I sent him a letter to ask him to come on December the 1st um, to talk to council as well. And as much as he wanted to, he couldn't make it. He had some other items to attend to. Right. So he sent me back a letter um, and... He gave me um, a letter to council and a letter to me. Mm -hmm. the, the letter to council was um, for me to read out from him. He would have read that. Right. Um, and, he just, and he just wanted to say that 
um, a, a, the same thing a lot of other people were, have been saying, that we're doing a great thing and that we should keep up the good work. Has anybody been negative about what you're doing? Sort of like, hey, you kids don't understand the economy. Come on, quit meddling. Well, yeah, one, one, pr yeah. well, yeah. <laughs> they have? Okay, Maybe. so you have yeah. had that too. Okay, well, I'll ask you a little bit more of that after the break. And before we uh, go to the break, we'll let you know how you can contact these young people. And if you want more information, you can contact ORCA, which is the Outdoor Recreation Community Association, care of 6457 Nelson Avenue, West Vancouver, BC, V7W2A5. And actually, they can probably contact you guys if they want to know more about activities for young people as well. Okay, good. We'll be right back after a quick break. with deals galore. <laughs> Want to go more? This Friday to Sunday, pay no GST or PST on almost everything store-wide. That's on top of the great stuff already on sale. And me, Mr. Magical Moose. <laughs> Only $9.93. What do you love to watch on TV? For me, it's my nice family show. Everyone has their favorites. Home decorating is cool. Now Rogers gives you more with 16 new channels in one great new package. More of what you want when you want it. Call it selfish. Call it instant gratification. It's science fiction for me. Call it Me TV. Order now and you can get Me TV for as little as $5.99 a month. Call one 888 one to order. People helping people make it a better day. Support your community. Please give generously to this year's United Way campaign. The owners of Big O Tires from Vancouver Island and Powell River demonstrate how important tires are when braking. Big O Tires drives home the best value on the Hankook Mileage Plus. Provides all-season grip for the life of the tire. The Hankook Mileage Plus passenger tire. See how far they'll run. Guaranteed to run 130,000 K. Time for change? Big O Tires. A reputation you can ride on, and they'll stand in front of you. Weekend sale with deals galore. <laughs> Want to go more? This Friday to Sunday, pay no GST or PST on almost everything store wide. That's on top of the great stuff already on sale. And me, Mr. Magical Moose. <laughs> Only $9.93. And the question of the day today to what extent should the preservation of wildlife come first ahead of development? And here are some of the comments on the street. I think it should be uh, kept in balance. Um, but it's just finding that balance that's probably the difficulty. We live in a natural world. We are, are temporary travelers passing through an ancient place. We share this place with many other species, many other forms of life. They have a right to be here. We do not have the right to trample their sacred spaces. I have, uh, I have no problem with preserving wildlife at the expense of development. I don't think that development um, at the expense of wildlife is development. I think that it is foolishness. Well, I think development is progress and that happens and comes along, but I think that we have to be concerned about everything and wildlife is an issue. And people seem more concerned about jobs and things like that, but the environment is where we live and we, you know, we need to take care of it. I think there should be a balance. We should find a balance between wildlife and uh, development. You know, there should be a balance. We can't sacrifice everything. And we have with us our two other guests. And actually, uh, now that uh, David and Kathleen are over there, we have Tristan and Michael with us here. Okay, you guys have long names. Tristan Huntington, that's a very fancy name. Mm -hmm. And Michael Van Innsberg. That's yeah. a good name, too. Great. Now, uh, the two of you have also been speaking out. You've made presentations. You've been involved in this from the beginning. Uh, just before we go back to the phone lines, why don't you tell us what's so special about this frog? Why should we care about it? What did you learn about the frog? Um, well, we learned that it was a very primitive species, 
It has two to three rows of teeth on the bottom and eight to thirteen on the top. Is that unusual? Uh, yeah, oh. and it uses that to scrape algae off the rocks. And that sounds pretty appetizing, hey? <laughs> it needs um, clear, fast-running, mount cold mountain-running stream mountain streams to survive. Right. And um, that's quite a lot to learn about a frog. Yeah. And also, it's a tailed frog, which we saw in uh -huh. the story. So that's that's a little bit unique, right? Huh. Yeah, yes. you think so too? Yeah. Okay, we're going to take some calls and then you can uh, answer a few more questions. Let's talk to Henry in Central Saanich. Hi, Henry. Hello. Hi, go ahead. Nice show, Judy. Oh, well, thank you. I uh, just want to draw to the children's attention the fact that uh, they set aside thousands of square miles of uh, real good timberlands to mm -hmm. protect the spotted uh, owls. Right. And uh, in comparison, their request for 100 uh, meters on either side of the creek seems small. I think that's an excellent point, actually. Thank you for that. Um, what he's referring to is a few years ago, especially in the forest, there was a huge controversy over a spotted owl. Did you ever hear about that? Mm -hmm. no. You see, because a few years ago, you guys were like, what, five? Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. Anyway, and so they did set aside a lot of forest land. That might be something that your parents can help out in preparing if you have to go back to council. Do your parents, are your parents helping you out with some of your presentations? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Are they? Yeah. What do they think about what you're doing? My mom thinks they're really doing a good job. Does she? Yep. Oh, that's good. And you guys help put together that brochure, too, so you're learning writing <coughs> skills, too. Yep. Bless you. Everybody's sneezing in here today. Okay. <coughs> Let's talk to Gord Hello. in Mission. Oh, they tired you so Let's go to George in Lanceville. Hi, George. Hi, uh, Judy. Yeah, hi. Congratulations on having such an interesting show. Oh, thank you. Oh, and uh, I w nice. want to encourage the children to keep on going with what they're doing there. They're absolutely right. Right. Okay, I'll hang up and let somebody else talk. Okay, well, thank you, George. It's nice that there are so many people trying to encourage you. What do you need to happen? Like, I mean, how emotional are you about having that 100 meters setback from the creek? Well... I really, really want these frogs to survive so other people can do the same thing we did and study them. Right. And you guys have spent quite a bit of time studying them, haven't you? Yes. In their natural environment. Mm -hmm. Like you're not like catching them and putting them in jars. No. No. <laughs> that would kind of be contrary to the environmental thing, wouldn't it? Yeah. 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 What about other kids, too? Are you sharing your, what you're finding with the other kids at your school? Mm, yeah, I am. A little bit? Yeah. Are your teachers starting to get involved, too? Yeah, yeah, we've watched tapes and stuff. Okay, great. Well, we're going to talk to Sheila now in Victoria. Hi, Sheila. Oh, hi, Judy. Hi. And a couple of comments. First of all, I hope that the representative guests you have there today are sign signaling a new era of political activism that maybe collectively our society is moving forward into where mm -hmm. um, participation comes from the heart rather than old style political posturing. Right, that's a good comment. And related to your one uh, guest who spoke about the idea that all problems can be fixed, mm -hmm. an excellent attitude that our innocent youth can portray because many older people who take that view are, are labeled as being too Pollyanna in their thinking. <laughs> so it's so refreshing to know that we have youth. And one last comment mm -hmm. with respect to the, yes, the alternate topic of troubled youth. Mm -hmm. Let's hope by what you're portraying and bringing to heightened awareness and illumination today mm -hmm. will help community, family, and school leaders um, explore continuing opportunities so that all youth can know there is hope for them and, and roots they can participate in society. Thanks. Thank you. That was a very articulate speech. I think one thing that, that a lot of us as adults would like to say, I mean, I, that I keep hearing from people, is how important we think it is for some of you to start working on these problems now, because it's going to take about that long to fix some of them. Have you learned a lot about sort of the, um, the whole process of how you change things through this? You know, going through and making a presentation to city council and bringing that forward? Yeah. Have you? Yeah. Is it more complicated than you thought, or is it kind of basic? Mm, it's more complicated than I thought. Right. And how do you find out how to make those presentations? Who did you ask? Um, well, we just sort of um, started um, writing down what we really thought. Right. And then it just sort of came out. 
out of that. And so you guys are so cute. I mean, you're sitting here, you're so serious, and you're so cute. And I just can't get over the fact that you're all out there working for your communities. I think that's great. Now, where am I going now? Um, Aurora in Duncan. Hi, Aurora. Hi. Hi, go ahead. Um, well, I'm kind of a little mad about it because they're always, I'm trying to figure out, like, apparently it's a very old breed and it's very different because of its tail and everything. Right. And I'm wondering why they would want to destroy something, like, by doing this, that they could get a little bit of information out of. Right. It's a little upsetting. Yeah, that this could be, uh, that this could be threatened, this species. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you for that. I'm sure Thanks. the kids will appreciate the, that sentiment. This frog that we wouldn't know was there if you hadn't found it, right? How many people are, are upset about it and how many people are coming to you going, well, it's just a frog? Well, um, we haven't really had very many people that have called us and told us that. Most people that have called us have told us that they're with us and they really think what we're doing is, is a good thing. And, and all of those have been members of the public. You haven't had governments phoning you yet, like a, your local elected people. Like, for example, right there in West Van, yeah. there you've got two MLAs. Have you ever talked to the MLAs there? Because that's probably a good idea. Talk to those. Let's see, there's Ted Nebling in West Van Garibaldi, and then there's uh, Jeremy Dalton in West Van Capilano. Do you know those guys? No. You better get to know these guys. You tell them they better take this forward and try to get, get onto this. Um, we're talking Beth, with Beth in Brentwood Bay, and then I want to ask you, Kathleen, about some of the negative feedback you've had. But let's talk to Beth now. Hi, Beth. Hi. Hi. Um, first of all, good going, kids. One voice can make a difference, and never forget that. But there is a really critical, important point when you're dealing with developers and politicians and bureaucrats, mm -hmm. and that is no matter what they say in a meeting, get things in writing. Good point. We've had uh, lots of experience with situations where we were promised all kinds of wonderful things and everyone was lovely and friendly, but when it came to actual uh, dealing with the issue, well, some other priority took place and right. we, we lost what we were looking for. So get it in writing. That's really important. Yeah. And the more people like David Suzuki and um, federal and municipal politicians that you can get in writing on your side, the better. I think that's excellent advice. Thank you for that. She's right, because right now you're getting a lot of media attention, so it, it's helpful. But if you're going to keep this through, and I can tell that you guys really care about this issue, you're going to have to make sure that you've got it in writing from all the people who say, hey, we're with you. Now, Kathleen, I said I wanted to ask you, um, before the last break, I said, has anybody called you and said, you know, would you just quit meddling in this because you're just a kid? And you said, yeah, there have been a few people who've said that. Can you think of any of those comments? No, there was, there was one person on one of the radio stations that was making some very, very strange comments about us. But there was a lot of support. And also some friends, like on soccer and stuff, yeah. come up and said, oh, it's just a frog. What are you doing all this work for? Yeah. And what do you say when they say it's just a frog? I just say, um, well, I just kind of say, well, no, you're wrong, like, because <laughs> they don't know how important it is, because I think you really need to be interested in it yeah. to actually understand how yeah. significant it is. Okay, we have to take a break. When we come back, we'll take more of your calls. We're talking to some young activists who've gotten involved in their community, and it seems pretty, pretty universal, you know, good for them. We'll be right back. What do you love to watch on TV? For me, it's sports. Everyone has their favorites. So into history. Now Rogers gives you more with 16 new channels in one great new package. More of what you want when you want it. Call it selfish. Call it instant gratification. For me, it's comedy. Call it Me TV. Order now and you can get Me TV for as little as $5.99 a month. Call one triple eight Rogers one to order. <laughs> Tefal, the number one brand of non-stick cookware, is about to change cooking with this exclusive anti-warping stainless steel disc. This is Armorel. Inside, Armorel's new granite texture is even more scratch resistant. The result, a non-stick pan designed to last even longer, both on the inside and on the outside. Armorel from Tefal, available at Canadian Tire, major department stores and most other fine houseware retailers in Canada. There be seafood here at Thrifty Food. Hearth fire log. Tear one of these, light it, light a couple of candles, uh, serve dinner for you and your friend, and uh, you got a nice evening. A Johnny Cat, uh, cat litter, and uh, 
My cat, Tinker, uses it. Uh, eliminates odor. She seems to love it. Apparently she uses it quite often in a day. The Vancouver Island homegrown food store. Arr. You're making a list. You're checking it twice. We got the right gift. They're just the right price. Do your list for less at the bay. Get the savings of the season during the Bay's Christmas Housewares Fair. Save $25 on the DeLonghi Bacon Boil Oven with Toaster Feature. Includes adjustable thermostat and auto shutoff. Just $139.99. Find a lower advertised price on this item and we'll double the difference. Do your list for less All the places where you camp? Yeah. Oh, you've nicknamed places? Yeah. Isn't that interesting? They're just telling me about all the places they go hiking in this little map that they have. And you, so you've made up names for all these places because you go there so often. Yeah. That's really fun. And I hope that more young people, you know, take these on as after extracurricular activities. Uh, let's go back to the folks and we'll talk to Jack in Langley. Hi, Jack. Hi. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, my name's uh, Jack Meal from Langley. Okay. And uh, I was just wondering how you'd get into a program like this. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you for that question. Um, how did you get involved in your program? I mean, now I think he's talking about the recreational program, which is ORCA. How did you get involved in that? Well, we started on beavers, and my dad and Les were the leaders. Now, Les is David's dad. Right. Okay. Uh, but... Um, after that was over, we, s we left and a whole bunch of families that we knew, we started our own group called ORCA. So and you guys just decided to form a club? Right. Right. And, and then it's been going ever since. And how long has that been? Um, I think it was last year. So that's a long period of time for, for little guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, and how did you get involved in city council stuff? That's something your parents coached you through too? Um... Yeah, that's something that we wanted to do. So did you tell them, hey, we want to go and protect this frog? Well, they are in our group. It's like a family thing. Right. So the whole group decided that. Okay. Well, let's go back to the phones, and we'll talk to Bernie in Campbell River. Hi, Bernie. Hi. Hi, go ahead. Hi. Uh, I just want to tell the kids that I think they're doing a, a great job, and uh, I just wanted to know if they found any other interesting animals in the watershed. Okay, well, that's a good question, too, because you guys have spent quite a bit of time up there. What other things have you found? I mean, they don't have to be endangered species here. <laughs> I think he's just saying, what have you encountered out there? Mice. Mice? Yeah. Um, I think we saw two deer mice. Yeah. Right. And squirrels and things like that. Lots of little animals? Mm-hmm. And, and have you learned about watersheds as well? Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> All right. Well, we'll ask you a few more questions on that a little later. Let's talk to Ingrid now in White Rock. Hi, Ingrid. Hello. Uh, I really uh, want to say, first of all, that you're doing a marvelous job with those children. They must have some wonderful teachers and parents. Yeah. And uh, this other thing, I'm a grandmother myself, and uh, I know my kids are very aware of the ecosystem and so on. But this is just marvelous. Anyway, beside the point, I hope this comes out um, in the evening, mm -hmm. um, you know, where the developers can see these programs as well, not just right. us people who have the time here to see those programs. And uh, it is it's actually it's so important to always have a green space when mm -hmm. they're starting new areas, um, so, so many houses they're building, and mm -hmm. they're always forgetting about putting a uh, big, large green space in and leaving nature as it is in some areas, mm -hmm. and also have lots of room for the little ones to play. I know it's not always an area for for young people, but uh, even, I mean, the seniors uh, enjoy right. green space. They can't always go places, so they are bound to be in that small area. And I think it's very important what those children are raising Right. I've been thinking about, I even walked into some offices in, in, in the municipality in Langley once, and I lost my cool because I was taking my little one for a walk, and I did not have a footpath to walk on. Right. And uh, I, I became so frustrated. I said, well, you can always go in the school uh, a yard and play. And I thought, well, 
we would be dis disrupting the lessons there. Right. Okay. Anyway, this is my thought. Okay. Well, thank keep you. up the good work, children. You're wonderful. Okay. Well, Bye. thank you for that, Ingrid. So there's a lot of different things that she raised there. Um, in in West Vancouver, you're lucky. You have a lot of parks and you have a lot of places to hike. Ha but you've also gone to other places like Delta and some of those areas. Have you noticed differences in the type of uh, when you were doing your bird banding, for example? All the different, you're, you're nodding over there. I'll ask you, David, so you don't feel totally left out. What, what did you notice the difference between sort of Delta and West Vancouver for nature? Um, some places were a little bit wetter. Right. Some places were warmer. Um, some some uh, hikes that we went on, some of the mountains were steeper and some were, um, uh, weren't as steep. Mm -hmm. Maybe the, there were a lot more rocks on some of the paths, and um, there was just dirt on the others. Right. So you noticed there was yeah. a lot of geographic There was a lot difference. of uh, different ways the terrain changed as you went into different areas. Right. And this was obviously a good learning experience for you then, too. Yeah. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about the outdoors. And I think it's a good idea. If you do have some advice for the kids and where they go from here, we'll talk a little bit about the committee that is now supposed to report out on the issue that they care so much about. We'll be right back. So you've been watching the free preview of the new cable package. Exploring new boundaries with space, the imagination station. And still had time for a little golf with the Golf Channel. While enjoying some Superstation entertainment on TBS. Just three of the many channels in the new cable package. The free preview ends soon. To order, call one 591 1997 You could win great prizes, so turn on, tune in, and enjoy. Eden's Weekend Sale with deals galore. <laughs> Want an award? This Friday to Sunday, pay no GST or PST on almost everything store-wide. That's on top of the great stuff already on sale. And me, Mr. Magical Moose. <laughs> Only $9.93. How can you give someone a taste of something this refreshing, this cool, this holiday season? Give a Brita water filter system. It's a really cool gift. Santa is in the building seven days a week from now till Christmas. Get photos with Santa, get your gifts wrapped, and take advantage of Woodgrove's extended holiday hours. There's more sounds of Christmas at Woodgrove Center. We'll share the joys of the season. It's Christmas time and more at Woodgrove Center. Merry Christmas, baby. Shoot it, the night. Hi, sweetie. How's L.A.? <laughs> yeah, they take that there. Yeah, the place is looking fine. Pretty empty, though. Any chance we could hop on a plane? Be here for Christmas? Uh -uh. Yeah. Yeah, I miss you, too. Uh, there's someone at the door. And that's not our coming up, but uh, coming up tomorrow, we have Jill Decep, who is the leader of the Bloc Québécois. And we have uh, the MA on a Monday and other shows now. So what you're looking at right now is Lighthouse Park. And the scale is 1 to 5,000. And the little red dots that you're seeing, this is what the kids have put together um, as a result of all the time they're spending in the woods. And as David said very passionately during the break, Orca has been around for three years, not one year. So we need to know they've been doing this for three years. And every red dot indicates a place they go to frequently. And they actually, on this side, have listed names they've made for it, and they've named them after people they know and, and or people who've uh, initiated the hike, which is kind of a very nice idea. And, of course, there are no um, real place names for many of these places because uh, they're fairly, fairly small places. So anyway, so we'll go back to the phones. And we'll start with Lily in Victoria. Hi, Lily. Hello, Judy. I, I'm a grandma and a great grandma, and I'm really enjoying your program. Okay. And uh, <coughs> I, I love those little children, and I, I'm thankful for the courage they've got to do this kind yes. of thing. Yes. And uh, I, as a grandma, I, I love the out of doors and by the ocean and everything. Right. And, and I love to see these uh, things conserved. Right. Okay. And and some, sometimes the the children I I have got far more courage than we grown ups. 
when they'll speak out. Okay, well, thank you, Lily. I think that's true. I think a lot of people think that you have a lot of guts. I mean, I asked, I asked Kathleen and David if they were scared, and they said yes. What about you two? Do you get sometimes so scared you think, oh, I just can't do it? Um, well... Hmm, maybe? Sometimes? Yeah. Sometimes? Yeah, sometimes. So how do, you, how do you motivate yourself if you're worried, if you're kind of scared? How do you say, mm -hmm. okay, I have to do this? Well, I just tell myself that um, this is important, and then I go out and do it. Right, because the frogs are more important than being afraid? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, there you go. See? Well, that's great. So you're, you're setting a good example for some of us adults. Let's talk to Bernadette now in Coquitlam. Hi, Bernadette. Hello, Judy. Hi, go ahead. Congratulations to those young children. Yeah, it's I really nice. encourage you to do that. I just wanted to um, mention to them, I'm not really from Coquitlam, I'm visiting here. I'm from West Bank, which is just outside of Kelowna. Oh, I know it well. I'm sure you do. Yeah. I followed your career out there. Right. <laughs> but anyway, um, there is a small pond along the highway as you go along to catch the Coquihalla uh, Highway. Where the turtles are. Where the turtles are, right. exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's because of perseverance of people... Uh, wanting to continue with that, that mm -hmm. those turtles are there, and it is quite an attraction. And uh, as I gather now, there, I believe a new developer has bought into that, but he also has agreed to continue with this bit of a pond with these turtles there. Yeah, because they were so, going to fill that in, weren't they? Absolutely. Yeah, and when true. you look at it, you would think it's just a little green, scummy pond sort yeah. of thing, but there are all sorts of, of um, wildlife and what have you. Right. And these little turtles are wonderful to see floating on the logs in the summertime. So certainly these children should persevere, and when they want something done, just stick with it. That's right. Well, that's, a, that's an excellent comment, uh, what she's talking about. Do you guys know the Coquihalla Highway? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, well, when they were first doing some of the changes there, there were two ponds that seemed so small and insignificant, people were just going to fill them in. And it turns out there's all these turtles there. You can see them from the highway. Everybody knows they're there now. And uh, just a small group of people protected them. They'll be there now, well, for a long time. So now let's talk to... So she's saying to keep going. You're going to keep going anyway, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you've got that committee report coming out January 12th. Mm -hmm. So you're watching for that, right? Yeah. And you're going to let us know what happens. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good, because that's important, because everybody will be curious about that. Let's talk to Linda now in Victoria. Hi, Linda. Hi, Judy. I think your show is great. <laughs> and I love the kids standing up for something yeah. they believe in. Yeah. My comment is on the increasing population. It's causing us to build more roads, right. more um, developments, more everything, and it's destroying all sorts of habitats. We've talked about bears, owls, frogs. Now we've got air quality, water quality. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if it isn't better to try and stabilize our population where it is so all of these things can be protected because I imagine there's a lot that we don't even know the value of that's being cut down, destroyed, more people. Right. Well, I think that's that's probably true. There's probably a lot we don't know about. In West Vancouver, there's quite a bit of growth happening, aren't there? There are quite a few houses going up, new houses. Do you notice that in your neighborhoods? Do you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, do you find yourself looking at a lot of other places and say, geez, I wonder what they're doing to that land? Do you ever think about that now? Not really. Yes? Yeah. Yeah, you do? I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you ever talk to your parents about it? Um, hmm. <laughs> no. Really. No? Well, I guess you've got your plate full probably just with what you're doing. Okay. And you guys can jump in, too, if you want to. I know you're sort of sitting there going, okay, well, I'll be quiet. Um, but you don't have to be. Let's talk to Robert in New Westminster. Hi, Hi, Robert. Hi, how are you, Judy? Fine, thanks. Go ahead. I love your show. First time caller. Okay. I was just wondering, um, what, who are the developers, and what has their attitude been towards what, the, what they're trying to do, and if they've caused any trouble or have... Um, spoken to the to your guest directly. Okay. Well, uh, we did talk a little bit about that earlier about the meeting with the developers, and you guys said that it went quite well. Actually, I think Kathleen and David were saying that they'd initiated the, that they actually called you and said, "Why don't you meet with us?" Um, are you going to meet with the developers again? Do you think that's British Pacific Properties? Yeah, we probably will. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that'll be before or after the the city council says what they're going to do. We don't know. You don't know? Okay. Well, it'll be interesting to see if they're prepared to put a, a, a 100 meters is what you're looking for, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then would pu the public be able to access that too? Would you be able to walk along the creek if they present? Um, if they yeah. They, if, if they made the development, they'd um, probably put um, paths along the creek. Oh, okay. And then the paths so people would be able to at least walk along the creek and see what happens there. 
What did the developer say about that idea, though? Is that going to cause them a lot of trouble with their with the number of houses they're putting in? Do you know? Anyone? Did they did they mention that to you at all? That they if they had to redraw it? No. No. Oh, um, I think it's all over three hundred houses and apartments. Is what they're planning right now. Yeah. And so they'd have to they'd have to change that plan, which could be. A bit, yeah. A bit they already expensive. have changed it to try and cope with us. Oh, isn't that nice? Yeah. Um, it's. It's not enough yet, though. It's not I, enough. I yet? know they tried, and I'm really glad about that. But I don't think it's quite enough yet. Okay, so that's why it's still under consideration. Yeah. Well, um, I hope that this is encouraging you to to go from here and to keep involved in your community. Uh, is that basically you guys are feeling encouraged enough about this, or? Yep. Yeah. 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 Generally good. Okay. Anyway, we're out of time to talk to you guys, but we'll hear from you in the future. I'm sure. Yeah, and you guys, you can, you can watch for them on the news. I'm sure we'll be hearing from them all along. Now, if you want to contact us about this or other issues, this is how you can do it. You can write to Tyabji, 780 Kings Road, Victoria, BC, V8T5A2. Fax us at 250-389-1226. Email is tyabji at wic.ca. And our internet website, www.checktv.com, has information about this and other shows, including a real audio of the programs. We'll be right back after a quick break. <laughs> with deals galore. <laughs> Want to know more? This Friday to Sunday, pay no GST or PST on almost everything store-wide. That's on top of the great stuff already on sale. And me, Mr. Magical Moose. <laughs> Only $9.93. Did everybody forget how to set hair? Well, steam in some style with Conair's Curl Care. Gentle, velvety rollers, moisturizing mists take you from no style to soft, sexy, lasting style. Nobody sets style like Conair. Jumbo Metrics by Con Air, the ultimate styling tool for every new fashion trend in hair. With enough attachments to crimp, straighten, and curl, including a brush for softer effect or a smoother look. It's a mini salon in one. Here comes Christmas, had a Santa do it. My list keeps growing, how will I get through it? Come to our two-day power sale this weekend at Sears. To make it even easier, we're opening early on Saturday. There's something for everyone with big savings on all TVs like Sony, stereos like JVC, treadmills, and all Kenmore appliances. Plus, earn double Sears Club points when you use your Sears card. Come see the merry side of Sears. If IKEA's designs can make this space more livable, imagine the possibilities for your home. Eden's Weekend Sale with deals galore! <laughs> Want to know more? This Friday to Sunday, pay no GST or PST on almost everything store-wide. That's on top of the great stuff already on sale. And me, Mr. Magical Moose. <laughs> Only $9.93. When people think about Quebec and the issue of sovereignty, they often think of René Lévesque, Jacques Parizeau, or Lucien Bouchard. But a new leader is emerging. His name is Gilles Duceppe. He is the leader of the Bloc Québécois. He's also an elected MP in the House of Commons. And he joins us tomorrow. And that should be a very interesting kind of show. Uh, today we talked uh, with some young activists, and I think it's wonderful to see young children getting involved in this kind of thing. One of the callers said, we should stay away from political issues and maybe they'd be better shows. Actually, I think this represents some of the new politics that another caller referred to. I hope more and more young people become involved in their communities, and I also hope that this becomes an example of how young people are doing very constructive things for their own backyard. I hope that you will join us tomorrow for a very interesting program with Jill Duceppe. I'm Judy Tayabji. We'll see you then. It's here. It's here. It's here. It's here. It's here. Here it is. You didn't like that? Check TV. Today on Canadian Living TV. 
the ups and downs of a window washer. We'll meet a former drafting technician.